Let's begin the example with our first question. And question number one states, an organization is implementing a multi-factor authentication or MFA system for access to sensitive systems. What is the primary technical control associated with this security measure? Is it A, certificate-based authentication? Is it B, time of day restrictions? Is it C, biometric authentication? Or is it D, single sign-on or SSO? You have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, certificate-based authentication. Whilst MFA includes multiple factors, including something you know, something you have, or something you are, certificate-based authentication adds an additional layer of security by utilizing digital certificates. This technical control enhances the authentication process by requiring a unique certificate, increasing the overall robustness of access control. Employees are issued digital certificates that must be presented alongside with other authentication factors. This ensures that only authorized individuals with the correct certificates can access sensitive systems, mitigating the risk of unauthorized access. And now for the incorrect answers, time of day restrictions. Whilst time of day restrictions can be part of access controls, they are not the primary technical control associated with the MFA system's implementation. Biometric authentication is a valid MFA factor, but it's not the primary technical control highlighted in this scenario. And SSO, or single sign-on, streamlines authentication but does not represent the primary technical control in the context of secure certificate-based MFA. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, an organization is deploying a security information and event management or SIEM system to monitor and respond to security incidents. What is the primary detective control associated with this security measure? Is it A, log aggregation? Is it B, network segmentation? Is it C, role-based access control or RBAC? Or is it D, honey tokens? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, log aggregation. A SIEM system relies on log aggregation to collect and centralize event data from various sources. Log aggregation is the primary detective control, allowing security teams to analyze logs and identify patterns indicative of security incidents. Log aggregation enables the SIEM system to correlate events across the network, helping security analysts detect unusual activities and potential security threats. This detective control enhances the organization's ability to respond to incidents promptly. And now for the incorrect answers, network segmentation is a preventative control, preventive control that restricts access but is not the primary detective control associated with the SIEM system. RBAC or role-based access control is an access control measure but does not represent the primary detective control within a SIEM context. And the honey tokens are de deceptive elements used to detect unauthorized access. However, they are not the primary detective control in an SIEM deployment. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, an organization is implementing a zero trust security model to enhance its network security posture. What is the primary preventive control associated with this security measure? Is it A, application whitelisting? Is it B, network access control or NAC? Is it C, least privileged access, or is it D, intrusion detection system, or IDS? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, application whitelisting. Is now a zero trust model. Application whitelisting serves as a preventive control by allowing only approved applications to run. This control ensures that unauthorized or malicious applications cannot execute on the network, reducing the attack surface. Implementing application whitelisting involves specifying which applications are permitted to run on endpoints. This preventive control enhances security by minimizing the risk of unapproved applications introducing vulnerabilities or conducting malicious activities. And now for the incorrect answers, Network Access Control or NAC enforces policies for device access but is not the primary preventive control associated with application usage is a, in a zero trust model. Least privileged access is a principle guiding user permissions but is not the primary preventive control focused on application execution. An intrusion detection system or IDS is a detective control that identifies and responds to security incidents but is not the primary preventive control in a zero trust model. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, an organization is implementing a disaster recovery plan or DRP 
to ensure business continuity in the event of a catastrophic failure. What is the primary recovery control associated with this security measure? Is it A, data replication? Is it B, geographical redundancy? Is it C, regular security audits? Or is it D, cloud-based backups? Now, five seconds. And the correct answer is A, data replication. In the context of a DRP, data replication is the primary recovery control. It involves duplicating critical data to a secondary location in real time or near real time, ensuring that the event of a failure, the organization can quickly switch to the replicated data source. Implementing data replication involves creating and maintaining identical copies of data in geographically separated locations. This recovery control minimizes downtime and data loss in the event of a disaster. And now for the incorrect answers, geographical redundancy. Whilst geographical redundancy is related to disaster recovery, data replication specifically represents the primary recovery control associated with ensuring data availability. Security audits are important for overall security, but they are not the primary recovery control in a disaster recovery plan. And cloud-based backups contribute to data recovery, but do not represent the primary recovery control of data replication in a DRP. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, an organization is implementing Network Access Control, or NAC, to enforce security policies for devices connecting to the corporate network. What is the primary administrative control associated with this security measure? Is it A, security awareness training? Is it B, acceptable use policy, or AUP? Is it C, incident response plan? Or is it D, business impact analysis, or BIA? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Acceptable Use Policy, or AUP. AUP is the primary administrative control associated with NAC implementation. It establishes rules and guidelines for the acceptable use of the corporate network, guiding users on appropriate behavior and device compliance. The AUP may explicitly outline the requirements for devices connecting to the network, specifying security configurations and compliance standards. This administrative control ensures that users understand and adhere to security policies when connecting their devices. And now for the incorrect answers, security awareness training. While security awareness training is important, AUP is the primary administrative control associated with NAC, guiding users on acceptable, on acceptable network usage. An incident response plan is a recovery control and is not directly related to the administrative controls associated with NAC. And business BIA or business impact analysis is a part of risk management process but is not the primary administrative control in the context of NAC. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, an organization is implementing a new public key infrastructure, or PKI, for secure communications. What is the primary technical control associated with this security measure? Is it A, hash functions? Is it B, digital certificates? Is it C, access control lists, or ACLs? Or is it D, biometric authentication? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, digital certificates. In a PKI, digital certificates serve as the primary technical control. These certificates validate the identities of entities involved in a secure communication, ensuring the integrity and authenticity of exchanged information. Deploying digital certificates involves issuing unique cryptographic keys to entities, enabling a secure communication. The certificates, verified by a trusted certificate authority, or CA, play a crucial role in establishing and maintaining secure communications and connections. And now for the incorrect answers, hash functions are cryptographic techniques, but they are not the primary technical control associated with PKI for secure communications. Access control lists are used in network security for controlling access, but they are not the primary technical control within a PKI. And biometric authentication is a form of user validation, but is not the primary technical control associated with PKI. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, an organization is implementing a cloud access security broker or CASB to monitor and manage the use of cloud services. What is the primary preventive control associated with this security measure? Is it A, data encryption? Is it B, tokenization? Is it C, shadow IT discovery? Or is it D, access control policies? You know, five seconds.
And the correct answer is C, Shadow IT Discovery. In the context of a CASB, Shadow IT Discovery represents the primary preventive control. It involves identifying and controlling the usage of unauthorized closed services within the organization. Implementing Shadow IT Discovery allows the organization to identify and assess the risk of unauthorized cloud service usage. This preventing control enhances the overall security posture by preventing the use of unapproved services that may pose security risks. And now for the incorrect answers, data encryption is important, but it's not the primary preventive control associated with managing the use of cloud services through a CASB. Tokenization is a method of data protection, but it's not the primary preventive control highlighted in the context of shadow IT discovery. And access control policies are crucial, but shadow IT discovery specifically focuses on preventing the use of unauthorized cloud services. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, an organization is implementing an incident response plan or IRP to address security breaches promptly. What is the primary recovery control associated with this security measure? Is it a regular security audits? Is it B, system backups? Is it C, security awareness training? Or is it D, intrusion prevention system or IPS? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, system backups. In the context of an IRP, system backups represent the primary recovery control. Regularly backing up critical systems and data ensures that in the event of a security breach, the organization can restore affected system to a known good state. Implementing system backups involve creating copies of critical data and configurations. These backups serve as a foundational recovery control, allowing the organization to recover from incidents such as data breaches or system compromises. And now for the incorrect answers, regular security audits. Security audits are important for overall security, but they are not the primary recovery control in an incident response plan. Cybersecurity or security awareness training. Security awareness training is a preventive control, not recovery control associated with addressing security breaches. An intrusion prevention system or IPS is a technical control focused on preventing and detecting network-based threats, not a primary recovery control in the context of incident response. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, an organization is implementing a role-based access control or RBAC system to manage users' permissions effectively. What is the primary administrative control associated with this security measure? Is it a business continuity plan or BCP? Is it B, job rotation policy? Is it C, security awareness training? Or is it D, identity and access management or IAM policy? You now five seconds. And the correct answer is D, Identity and Access Management or IAM Policy. An IAM policy is the primary administrative control associated with RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control. It defines the rules and guidelines for managing users' identities, roles, and access permissions within the organization's information systems. The IAM policy may outline procedures for assigning roles, updating access permissions, and removing access for employees who change roles or leave the organization. The, this administrative control ensures the effective implementation of RBAC or role-based access control principles. And now for the incorrect answers, business continuity plan or BCP focuses on business continuity and is not directly associated with administrative controls related to the RBAC. Job rotation policy. Job rotation is a human resource strategy, but is not the primary administrative control within the context of RBAC. And security awareness training. Security awareness training is important, but is not the primary administrative control associated with RBAC. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our exam. An organization is implementing a Security Operations Center, or SOC, to enhance its cybersecurity posture. What is the primary technical control associated with this security measure? Is it a Security Incident and Event Management, or SIEM system? Is it B, Physical Access Controls? Is it C, Business Impact Analysis, or BIA? Or is it D, Redundant Firewalls? You now have five seconds.
And the correct answer is a Security Incident and Event Management or SIEM system. A SIEM system is the primary technical control associated with the Security Operations Center. It enables the collection, correlation and analysis of security events allowed the, allowing the SOC to detect and respond to potential threats in real time. Integrating a SIEM system into the Security Operations Center's infrastructure allows security analysts to monitor and analyze logs, alerts, and events from various sources. This technical control enhances the organization's ability to identify and mitigate cybersecurity incidents. And now for the incorrect answers, physical access controls are important for securing facilities, but are not the primary technical control associated with a Security Operations Center. BIA or business impact analysis is part of risk management process but is not the primary technical control within the context of a security operations center and redundant firewalls contribute to network resilience but they are not the primary technical control associated with the security operations center. Ladies and gents this is the end of our exam if and only if you found this video informative make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friend. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you guys next time.